My name is Panos Manikis. I was born in Northern Greece in Thessaloniki. And uh, I came to this place around 30 years ago, looking for a farm. And uh, from 1989, I've been growing vegetables and fruit trees and uh, grains in the natural farm that was created uh, 30 years ago. Uh, although I have studied agriculture at the university level, and uh, I could say that my profession is that of a farmer, I wouldn't like to call myself neither a natural farmer, or, but rather uh, not a scientist, but rather someone who wants to sow seeds in the desert, someone who tries to sow seeds in human hearts. I have started this uh, path around 40 years ago, and uh, since I came to this region, in northern Greece, in near the town of Edessa. My dream was that of creating a, a utopia and to live there happily. And then in 1993, after I had sent uh, to Fukuoka a book translated into Greek language, The Natural Way of Farming, I received back from Fukuoka another book which was the revolution of God, man, and nature. I remember that I read it in, in a feverish state, and I understood that it would change my whole life. And from that time onwards, I could clearly see that my path is that of someone who wants to sow seeds in the desert. And so, since 1993, we started organizing small cities, and then in 1998, after I had come into contact with Fukuoka, we decided to organize a 10,000 hectare city, and we had 3,000 people from all over the world, and we organized the largest city ever on this planet, with uh, scientists, with farmers, with volunteers from all over the world, trying to change the climate in the region of the prefecture where I live. Because if we manage to make a green mantle over an area of at least 10,000 hectares, then clouds would gather, will gather, and rain will follow. Because as Fukuoka understood intuitively in 19... 81, when she was in the States, the rain doesn't come from the heaven, doesn't fall from the heaven. It springs forth from the ground. It's the large leaves of the trees. It's the high-growing trees that will form more clouds and will call the rain. And then, all these years being dedicated to this action of so in seeds in the desert, in Greece and in other countries. We had the economical crisis in Greece in 2007. And uh, I understood that it is very important now to make people aware of this crisis, which is not only crisis on an economy level. <coughs> it is mainly crisis in human relationships. And if we don't change this, nothing can change. As Fukuoka used to say in the past when she was alive, it's, if we want to make the desert green, we have to solve all the problems of the world. Religious problems, nationalistic problems, all the problems of human relations. And uh, since that time, I st we started traveling around Greece and in other countries of the world, in Argentina, in Spain, talking about self-sufficiency as the answer to this 
economical crisis and more than that to try to build harmonic human relations because as I used to say during lectures in or in seminars and workshops we organized it is very important to understand that the real wealth for human beings is not the gold is not the money we deposit in a bank and if we speak about a country is not the gold but it's the richness of nature it's the richness of human relationships and in that is that we have to focus and to use the, all our energy to change this bad situation nothing can be done nothing can change if we don't understand that we are responsible for what happens in society we are the society and if we change societies will change so if we become aware of our responsibility then it's very clearly very clear what we have to do is to work on the direction of building human relationships and to sow seeds in human hearts in the deserts in the barren mountains of the world and to create natural farms where people can live happily and change the whole planet into a garden of Eden so in our region in Odessa and in the natural farming center we organize workshops to show to people how to grow their own food but it's not only that we are talking about self-sufficiency on food level if we manage to grow our own food and become self-sufficient then we are we could easily see that health is in our hands it's not in the doctor's hands if we have natural food if we are, our mind is relaxed then the health is accessible to all human beings because it's unnatural to have diseases men were born to not to suffer from diseases and to live an unhappy life men were created were born to enjoy perfect health and if we manage to become self-sufficient even on health level then the third step will follow which is we don't need masters or gurus to show us the truth to tell us about the truth to speak about the truth all human beings each one of us can attain can understand the, the things the way they are can achieve can have the truth and then everything will change drastically within a few years within a few months so it's not only working on food level organizing workshop also and showing people how to make their own bread with uh, organic flour how to make their own soap traditional way how to learn about medicinal herbs and to have a practical pharmacy for their own homes how to dry vegetables or other food but it's also working on building human relations that is the main goal and all other things can easily be attained if we manage to build harmonic human relationship it's not easy but it's the only way for humanity and for individuals because although I'm a stupid man and despite my age I am around 66 years old I make many stupid things and I know that they will follow me all these stupid things up to the end of my life 
But there is one thing I have understood very clearly, that what happens to all creatures is of what most important to my life, to my survival, to the quality of life. So I could easily say that changing a bit the poem in Hemingway's book, that what happens to, not only what happens to other human beings is very important to me, but also to all creatures in nature. So if people understand this, then the action will come very easily and things will change drastically very quickly. The natural farm in Odessa have reached its highest point. And now what remains for the man who serves nature and tries to build soil fertility is to realize in the end of October a large city to sow a hundred different varieties of trees, bushes, vegetables, green manure plants and grains and to let this nature take care of the rest of the things. And then it will be a farm for everybody. No people will be around. There will be no need to do any kind of work, only harvesting the fruits and the gifts of nature. And it will be a farm for everybody to visit it, to enjoy it, and to enjoy the fruits of nature. And uh, if I manage to realize this point, then I think I have concluded my course in, in this earth and I have proved practically that the philosophy of natural farming is not only a philosophy but a practical reality. It was at the age of 18 that the doctors told me that I wouldn't live a long life. I was suffering from a very serial, serious disease and that was a real shock for me. I couldn't accept the idea of dying very young. So after I have tried all things they have told me, and after I am to understand that this medicine is a big mistake, it's unnatural to die from diseases, and that the real human situation is that of a perfect health. And then, uh, thanks to a friend, I came into contact with a doctor, and I started a vegetarian diet, and within six months, I was a free man, I was a healthy man. And I came to understand that uh, what I understood intuitively, it was not just out of fear of death, but it was the very reality that plants, animals and human beings can enjoy a perfect health if they live in a healthy environment. If we speak about human beings, if their mind is healthy, and then the food they eat is natural food. And I started looking for people who have followed this path. And the second book it has fallen into my hands, it was the One Straw Revolution, translated into English and written by Fukuoka. And uh, I remember I opened the book in a certain page and I read only one passage. And I said, this is it. This is what I was looking for. And within a few months, I was in Japan, and there I spent with Fukuoka six months learning from nature and from Fukuoka. And after I have worked in Brazil and India and uh, Italy and other countries, I decided to go back to Greece and to start my own farm. So in 1989, I started my natural farm in Greece, trying, as I said, to create a small utopia there. It is uh, one thing that happens in the farm is that through this dense vegetation and the presence of many evergreen trees and bushes and plants, the climate within my farm is a micro, a kind of microclimate. So I can even grow trees, fruit trees that cannot grow in our region. For example, mandarins and oranges. And I can even grow bananas in the future if I want to. And my goal is not to, to grow these crops and to sell them, 
but to prove this to the people practically that this is not the real climate where we live. The Rinjera are now around the town of Edessa. I believe that in the past it was a tropical jungle. And when human beings started cutting using the axe, the forest trees, the jungle trees, then the climate changed, everything has changed. And so it is some kind of game. And for me it is of no surprise that even crops that need a warmer climate can grow here. And the more fertile the soil that becomes, the healthier the plants, the, the bigger the crops, and the richer one can become this way. Because the natural farmer starts with building a rich soil, then creating healthy plants, and the pocket also will be full after that with money. But this is not the real goal. The chemical farmers start from the money aspect, and then in the end they give up agriculture because they destroy the soil fertility. Uh, we created the Natural Farming Center eight years ago and the intention and the goal was to have a place where we could receive volunteers, organize international meetings and to make labels and to sow all over Greece and around the world. And so we organized two international meetings with more than 200 people from 15 different countries from four continents. And people learn how to make clay balls, learn about the new techniques of clay balls, about the new materials we, we use in order to have uh, successful uh, seedings. And also uh, organizing a school for self-sufficient, see, where people can learn how to grow their own food, how to make their own bread, how to make their own soap, how to start wo walking in this very beautiful path, we could call it self-sufficiency. And so every year, in the month of August, the last 10 days, we organize meetings with people from all over the world and all over Greece. We make labels and we send these labels to all directions to create natural farms, to regreen the forests, to regreen the mountains, the barren mountains of Greece, and not only. And also, we travel around the world organizing practical seminars in different countries of Europe, in Italy, in Spain, in Germany, in Holland, in uh, Argentina, in Turkey, and uh, offering this knowledge always free to the people. It's very important to me not to sell this knowledge because we got it as a gift from life and we should give it as a gift to all human beings. Money shouldn't be involved. So all these international meetings, all these things we organize, it's free for everybody. And all the money that is necessary for this thing comes directly from the farm. That I consider a very important thing. And so uh, there is no, that there will be no obstacle to uh, spreading this knowledge, which is should be free for everybody. So that is uh, a few of the things we do in this natural farming center. And uh, very soon, in the month of September, October, we'll start creating natural farms in southern Greece, which is a very barren uh, area with a very arid climate. And uh, it's very difficult to grow crops even with the use of water to create natural farms only by making clay balls, using new materials, new techniques, and trying to find the solution for the problem of desertification, and then to spread it in other countries of the world, to do things in Patagonia, in Argentina, in Chile, and in other places in Africa, and to show people how to regreen the deserts, how to call back the rain, and if it's possible, to create a green belt that will start from Portugal up to Iran, Iraq, and from the Atlantic Ocean 
to the own Indian Ocean, to create two green belts and to stop the expansion of desertification. Because although it seems very surprising, even Switzerland and Austria, that are supposed to be green countries, are already suffering from the change of the climate. The soil becomes less and less fertile, and the green they have is an imitation green mostly. So we have to, we have to act very quickly, because if the point of no return will come, then it will be too late to act. We have to sow these seeds as soon as possible. And all human beings should unite that, their efforts to that direction. We could say that the clay balls are the clay balls of hope and love. Hope for a, the creation of a paradise on earth and love for all human beings, for all beings. Because the forest we create through this spreading uh, of a big variety of trees and bushes and plants, annual plants and green manure plants, etc is to serve not only human beings but also birds and animals. So the forests that are created this way are, are for all beings. Clay was using clay as a basic uh, material and also using zeolite to keep the moisture within the clay balls, uh, the moisture from the rains of the atmosphere. We can use organic matter to give a minimum of nutrients to the newly born plant, the plant that has recently germinated, and to support it in the very harsh conditions where it lives. And also we can use fibers, coconut fibers, or sheep wool, or human hair, or cotton uh, fibers to make a strong clay ball that can even fall from the aeroplanes. And instead of using aeroplanes to kill innocent people, we could use aeroplanes to scatter the clay balls all over the world and to change the world into a paradise. So these clay balls of love and hope should be sown as soon as possible. Because when nature dies, God dies, human beings die. When uh, we were together with Fukuoka, traveling around the world and trying to sow seeds in the desert, she always used to say that was one of the few English English phrases he used to say, hurry up, hurry up. We should hurry. Not from the human point of view, the time point of view, but from the point of view of nature's time. Nature dies. And nature needs men and human beings with good will, who wants to sow seeds in the desert, who wants to sow to change the world into a paradise. And so this hurry up, hurry up, it's something I would ask to everybody. Let's lose no time. Let's sow seeds together. Let's build human relationships, harmonic human relationships, because this is the real richness in life. Let's build harmonic relationships with all creatures in the world. Let's not see nature as an opponent, as an enemy, but Let's see nature as a, our mother. Because when we kill our mother, we kill ourselves. We kill all beings. That's the only thing I would like to say. Hurry up.